what's really holding you back. We ask our audience members to share health issues that they just can't seem to shake. And Tasha's going to start us off. Tasha says, the health issue, she cannot shake. So what is that? My health issue, Dr. Oz and pastors, is that I tend to get stressed out. Um, I'm a single mom with two children, and trying to balance work, church, and home can sometimes be very stressful, where I find myself losing sleep at night and worrying a lot. Well, since most of us are where you are, I'm glad you asked that question, because we can get an answer to help a lot of us. Pastor Andrea, start us off. What is the, the pastoral spiritual prescription for constant worrying? Well, I mean... First of all, you got to give it to God. If you're going to pray, then, you know, why worry? You know, if you're going to worry, then don't pray. It's just common sense. You know, I was once a single mother, um, you know, married twice, and it was the stress that was upon me. It was just unbelievable. But, you know, I was dealing with bozos. That's why, you know, I had all that stress. So God got rid of my bozos and sent me my boaz. You get what right. I'm saying? So you just pray <laughs> to God, keep him first, and everything will be great. It'll be wonderful. So right. you just got to let it go. Just let it go. Have faith because faith without works is dead. You got to believe for the unseen before you can see it with your physical eyes. All right. So you just give it to God and let him work it out. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are many ways of getting to that sense of calm. Meditation can help as well. You know, get past whatever barriers you may have to allow your brain just to be quiet for a little bit. But you can train yourself to do that and use whatever crutches work for you. All right. Next roadblock is something a lot of us are struggling with. It's emotional eating. Take a look. Hi, Dr. Oz. My name is Erica, and I struggle with emotional eating. I go to food for comfort, whether I'm happy, sad, or angry. It's 10 a.m., and I literally already bought fudge brownies. Do I really need them? No, but it helps me. When I'm stressed, I eat. When I'm angry, I eat. When I'm sad, I eat. I just don't know what to do. My weight has fluctuated even because of it. I really need to get a handle on this. Eric, it's pretty compelling. <laughs> so, Dr. Kasher, why don't you help us with this? What's the, the spiritual prescription for emotional eating? Well, you know, I believe that so many of us go through it. I think that women, of course, we have, thanks Eve, you know, we have issues every month anyway, and it makes us grab things. And I think that, you know, when I walked through a divorce in 2006, I had that same issue where I, I just constantly would it came from rejection you know a reading comes from rejection it comes from it doesn't talk back to you and it feels a void at that time and then after that you stay shameful because your genes don't fit and it's like everything in your life is just falling apart and when I was going through my divorce in 2006 I was so broke down you know you have to ask yourself what's going on on the inside of me that has made me feel like I need to reach for things instead of getting an activity or getting involved in a support group or allowing yourself to start believing in yourself, lay hands on yourself and say, God, you know, help me see myself the way you see me. And I want to tell you something. All right, I didn't come over here. I haven't touched you really time. Yeah. I, I want you to know one thing, that nobody else can do it for you. Okay. And you have to decide one day that, you know what, this food, it's not fulfilling a void on the inside of me. And you need to do what I did. I would get little post-it notes, and I would get post-it notes, and I'd put them all over my house. Mm. For, I would Google, what does God say about me? That's you know, not what my ex said about me, yeah. not what my dad or mom or whoever abandoned me said about me, but what does God say about me? And he says that I'm awesome. He says that I'm wonderful. He says that I'm made in his image and your nose, like all the things that we hate about ourselves. He took so much time to create that. And sometimes we just need to remind ourselves. And so I put little post-it notes all over. And let me just tell you something else. I would see those post-it notes every day. And then they started outweighing everything my past said about me. And then once you start getting joy back in your heart, you no longer want to reach for that stuff because you're so busy living. You don't even want to go to sleep at night because you're so excited about what life is bringing you. Mm. And let me just tell you something else. Yeah. Give yourself permission to have a meltdown every once in a while. I know. Ah, it's hard. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Have a meltdown. Cry and get back up. <laughs> Let's go to Alex. Yeah. What's, what's your issue, Alex? You might be helped with a, with a spiritual prescription with. Well, I have a tendency to get pretty angry pretty quickly. I have no patience, and it's just not beneficial to my life whatsoever. What makes you angry? Um, well, I have road rage, um, 
people with a lack of like common knowledge. Um, I mean, <laughs> I could go on if you really want me to. Are these your friends over here? Yes. Did she get angry? Oh, yes. <laughs> and what does she do when she gets angry? She can yell, scream. She can go off. Scratch? Yeah, she just gets that look and you know, just leave her alone <laughs> for a little while. Your anger obviously hurts the heart, whether it's expressed or repressed, but I suspect Pastor can help us on this. It probably yeah, quite a um, bit in other areas. I was a guy that had anger issues as well, um, and I started living by this principle that um, every air condition has a vent. And so where there's hot air coming out, there's cool air coming out on the other side. And so you got to let your hot air out. You kind of got to have people that, that you trust that you can go to and pour out, you know. You have to, you know, not don't pour out on social media uh, because those people don't love you, you know. But you got to pour out in places where people can trust that information, where that you can cry in front of those people, that you can vent in front of those people. And a lot of times uh, there's a fear there that you haven't identified, that you're angry. Sometimes you're you're, you're really in road rage, but you're upset about a, a, a relationship or you're upset, upset about a bill or you're upset about the thing, something else, but you're just acting out at that point in time. And so what I, I learned to do is just have faith in what I know and not respond on what's going on because what's going on can change quickly. But what I know about God will never change. And so when you start having faith and confidence in that, it's, 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 it's almost like, it's almost like, you know what, I'm not going to let this thing ruin my day. I'm not going to allow this thing to ruin, because, I mean, there are things that's going to come at you day one. As soon as you get out, you know, you're going to be smiling, and somebody's going to step on your nice little boots. But but you got to just, uh, you nice know, boots. almost be apologetic to people. Just, you know what, you didn't mean to do that. You didn't mean to ruin my day, and I'm not going to allow you. That's okay. You know what, and, and, and just, just fly above all that mess and stress like an eagle. Force yourself to smile because it's contagious. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of smiling, you know, uh, yeah, you Patrick know. Kenton got another talent. <laughs> yeah, he can inspire us with rap. If you, if you ask him nicely, of course. Oh, can you rap? Uh, okay. <laughs> um, say it out. It wasn't the stylish clothes you wear. It wasn't the way you comb your hair. Or nothing material, but it was all spiritual. Blame it on salvation, not your education. Believe that. Uh, I know that things have been hard on you. Uh, you still look good, you got God on you. Uh, let's keep it moving, don't quit. Make sure that God is a part of your daily outfit. Yeah. All right, go. Whoa. You can get the praises of the ladder at auction. Bring the nights to time. I'll be right back. <laughs> We're tossing those out and rewriting the book. I would eat the fruit. Way to look at your body. Find out which one you are to maximize weight loss results and what to eat for your body type. This actually is your panky, doesn't it? Plus, how this pair of jeans can make any body type look 10 pounds thinner. That's coming up Friday on Dr. Oz. USANA.